Hoffaday, good evening, and thanks for tuning in to PNC's News. Now we are broadcasting live in Saipan and in Guam. I'm Clint Rogel. Janela Carrera is off island. She will return next week. Top of your news tonight. Two women from Aganya Heights were attacked in a home invasion on Saturday evening. Police say both women, one 91, the other 68 years old, suffered facial and head cuts. PNC's Rosal Romanes has more in this report. Police are seeking the public's help in finding the suspect or suspects of a home invasion and robbery that sent two elderly women to the hospital this past Saturday. I got in touch with one of the victims, Frances Hudgens, and she tells us it was her and her mother who were attacked. 68-year-old Frances Hudgens and her 91-year-old mother were enjoying an evening at her home in Aganya Heights when she heard someone knocking on the door, someone with a familiar voice. Hudgens says she never expected what happened next. She told me that uh, she opened the door because she thought it was a familiar voice. And as she opened the door, they forced the door in and, you know, it, it just... She couldn't do anything because she was caught by surprise. Hudgens tells us that a man forced his way inside her home and hit her repeatedly in the back of the head with a sharp object. Hudgens says her mother was sleeping on the couch at the time of the attack, but the man went after her as well. Again, Heights Mayor Paul McDonald says an incident like this taking place in his village is very alarming. She had a lot of dogs that she keeps on front and they would have been alarmed if it was somebody else. So, very uh, suspicious, uh, you know, and a lot of things to uh, consider when you're investigating. Hudgens tells us she is deeply traumatized by the event. She says she was released from the Guam Memorial Hospital after she received about seven staples to close the bleeding wound on the back of her head. As for her 91 year old mother, Hudgens says she suffered cuts and a facial fracture, but she is in stable condition and should be released from the hospital in a few days. McDonald says his staff regularly conducts neighborhood patrols around the village. He gives this advice to residents. And be aware and uh, be prepared for anything and uh, even if you're sh you're kind of familiar with the voice make sure that you know they identify themselves before you even open your doors. Hudgens says because she was attacked from behind she did not see the man. She says her mother doesn't recall anything either. Hudgens says the man got away with her purse. Guam Police Department spokesman officer A.J. Balahaja says officers from the Hagatnya precinct were called to the home at about 8.46 in the evening for a reported home invasion and robbery. Balahaja says the case remains open and has been forwarded to criminal investigations for a follow-up. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact the Guam Police Department or Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-4357. Supreme Court justices heard the arguments for and against the appeal filed on behalf of former Guam police officer David Manila in the Blue House Lounge case today. PNC's Betsy Brown joins us with more on the case. Betsy, what does this appeal entail? Clint, Officer Manila and Officer Anthony Kenga are each serving 30-year sentences for their convictions related to the Blue House prostitution case. Both have filed appeals with the Guam Supreme Court to overturn their convictions. Today, Manila's attorney, Terry Timblin, told the justices he has a number of issues with the case. The number of women working in the Blue House is irrelevant. In this case, there were eight or nine. But if there had been five, then there would have been five counts of conspiracy. If there had been 15 involved, there would have been 15 counts of conspiracy. Attorney Terry Timblin argues that his defendant, David Manila, should have only been charged with one count of each conspiracy charge in the Blue House Lounge case, and not one count for every alleged victim in the case. Assistant Attorney General Marianne Woolishuk, however, argues that that is not grounds for reversal. Each of those underlying crimes that go with each of the conspiracy charges has different elements, so there are different things that need to be proven. And in any event, the remedy for something like this is to remand for resentencing. It is not reversal, so reversal would not be appropriate in, in this case. He, he would still be convicted, it's just that this court would have to do an analysis using those seven factors and decide whether there is a single conspiracy or not. 
Timblin also told the justices today that the witnesses in the Blue House case had a number of reasons to lie, and he claims that his motion for a new trial should be granted because a new witness has come forward, even though the justices pointed out today that Timblin was aware of this potential witness during the trial. What happened is, uh, during the trial, she uh, uh, starts watching television on the internet and says, wait a minute, these girls are all lying. And of course, at that time, uh, I don't hear about this until two months later. So that's when I filed a motion for a new trial. Chief Justice Robert Torres said the court will take the arguments under advisement. Meanwhile, arguments for Anthony Kanga's appeal have not yet been heard. Former officer Mario Laxamana was also named in the Blue House case, but he took a plea deal and testified against his former colleagues. A verdict was reached in the case of two men accused in the gang rape of a woman in Denido last year. Betsy Brown also has that story for us. Betsy? Three men were originally charged in the brutal rape of a 24-year-old woman in Dedido in January of last year. One of those men, Jose White Longa, pled guilty prior to trial. A jury returned the verdicts on the other two yes, uh, on Saturday. Minor Ichi Nishar Riganta was found guilty of two charges of first-degree criminal sexual conduct as well as second-degree kidnapping. The other man in the case, Francis Mattias, was found not guilty on both charges of first-degree criminal sexual conduct, but jurors did find him guilty on both charges of third-degree criminal sexual conduct, as well as, as a second-degree felony, that is, and they also found him guilty of kidnapping. The three are all scheduled to be sentenced in April. A woman was arrested for allegedly beating her eight-year-old daughter with a broomstick. Guam Police Department spokesman officer A.J. Balahaja says, a family member brought the eight-year-old girl into the Dedido precinct on Saturday to report the abuse. Balahaja tells us there were marks, welts, and swelling almost everywhere in the child's body. The mother of the child, Naomi Pensy, who's 28 years old from Jigo, was arrested for aggravated assault, family violence, child abuse, assault, and use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a felony. The girl's father, a 40-year-old, Wynn Mariano was also taken into custody for being present while the assault took place. He was charged with child abuse. Balahaja says Child Protective Services took the custody of the girl and had her treated for her injuries. Both parents were booked and confined. A 14-year-old male who escaped from the Department of Youth Affairs cottage homes yesterday has been reapprehended. DYA reports indicate the client ran away from the facility while staff assigned to his dormitory were in the process of conducting phone calls for the other clientele. According to DYA Public Information Officer Danielle Camacho, the minor's mother took him to the Agate Precinct where he was re-apprehended. The minor has been charged by GPD with escape and is currently on lockdown at the Youth Correctional Facility in Manila. A Guam Airman in the Guam Air National Guard has been recognized as the best of the best in the entire Air National Guard. Captain Alvin R. Alvarez received the Outstanding Air Reserve Component Security Forces Company Grade Officer Award. In a quote provided to the media, Alvarez says he's grateful but believes, quote, it is our airmen and the leadership in my unit and in the Guard that deserves the accolades. Alvarez is a member of the 254th Security Forces Squadron who led a team of 31 Guam airmen on deployment to al Udaid Ab Qatar in support of the Air Force's Air and Space Expeditionary Force mission. They focused on base defense measures including personnel and resource security. Alvarez is also a fifth grade teacher at Weddingale Elementary School in Dededo. He's been a DOE teacher for more than 17 years. All right, and here's Blake Watson now with a look and what's ahead in sports? Do you hear that? Exactly. Peace and quiet now that Janella's gone, right? I'm just kidding. I miss her too. She'll be back. Miss you, Janella. But if you miss sports, you don't have to wait too much longer. We've got Masters Baseball plus Boys Basketball all in sports. Nice, neat little package. I'll be there. See you soon.